Hey there everyone, this is Brian Jones from Serverless Guru. In this video, we're gonna be talking about AWS AppFlow. Amazon AppFlow is a fully managed integration service that enables you to securely transfer data between software as a service applications like Salesforce and AWS services like Amazon S3 and Amazon Redshift in just a couple of clicks. Now this is a very important service because what it allows you to do is transfer this data without actually having a whole bunch of Lambda code or EC2 code or any application code in between these, uh, these two services. So what does this look like? So imagine that we had a use case, okay? So we have a company that sells a product. That company is going to have a sales team. That sales team is going to need to take action based on opportunities as they come in. The sales list needs to be refreshed. By using AppFlow, I can connect the Salesforce account for my company to an AWS S3 bucket and connect our sales application to AWS S3 directly or I can trigger an AWS Lambda function after it goes from Salesforce to AWS S3, which can do additional processing and aggregation and store that in a database, which my client application can then receive. And so this is important because in this example, we can have the Salesforce application trigger our AppFlow pipeline and actually store that data on AWS S3. But not only that, let's kind of walk through how this actually works. The first thing that you do is you create a data source. A data source could be Salesforce, it could be Marketo, it could be Slack, it could be ServiceNow, it could be a whole list of different application types that are supported, uh, these, these SaaS platforms. You can also then create a connection between Salesforce and AWS. You do that through authentication via OAuth. So as you go through the steps to actually set up AWS AppFlow, you actually click and you'll select the OAuth screen. You'll accept the permissions that AppFlow needs to run and then you're connected. From there, you can select what type of flow will take place. So for instance, let's say that for Salesforce, we want to track opportunities. There's a whole bunch of other types of actions that might trigger or events that might trigger app flow from Salesforce. But let's say it's opportunities in this case. So once we know that, we can select that option and then we can go to create a destination. So when we create a destination, we'll select S3 bucket and then we can go to select the flow trigger. So a flow trigger, has a couple of different options. This is similar to other AWS services. The first one would be on-demand. On-demand is run as needed, as you might think of on-demand with EC2 uh, and other services uh, such as that. There's also on-schedule, so that would be running at a specific interval. So you can imagine that as a CloudWatch rule or a cron job, something like that. There's also on-event, so that would happen automatically. Salesforce can trigger your app flow system by an event being published from the Salesforce side. And then you can take that, once you have the destination set up, you know it's gonna to go to S3, you can then start beginning to map the fields from your source to your destination. And so what that looks like is, let's say in this example, the opportunity that's going to trigger from Salesforce to AppFlow is gonna send an object, JSON data. That JSON data is gonna have specific fields inside of it. And so what we can do inside of the AppFlow UI console, inside the AWS console, we can actually specify what will be mapped. So we can say we want all fields, we can select specific fields, uh, and then we can go from there. Another thing that we can do here is that we can also mask certain fields. So let's say that you know this data is going to be read by people that maybe don't need all the information, right? Maybe there's certain uh, restrictions that you have around showing people's addresses or you know tax IDs or something, you know whatever that system looks like. Uh, and you can mask those values so that as it actually gets put into S3, it's not revealing that sensitive data. And that gives you another layer of protection there automatically. And, and let's just step back for a second and say, all of the stuff that we're describing here is not any application code that you're actually writing. It's a connection from a SaaS platform to AWS, and it's a very beautiful combination. The next thing that you can do is you can add validation or conditions to specific fields. So what that might look like is, let's say that if the, for this, like let's say for the budget for this project, is under a certain threshold, then we can, we can basically say, okay, stop the flow. Um, we could also do that in different ways as well, because there's other ways that you can specify these, such as if it's a negative number, if it's, zero, if it's equal to zero, if it's null, we can say we can either terminate the flow when we find that field being null, or we can just say remove that field from the actual you know, data that's going to our S3 bucket. And then from there, 
you know, we can also set up, you know, an additional thing, which is filtering. Filtering would allow us to actually specify based on this source data that's coming in, based on that JSON that we're receiving, let's look for one field, maybe it's a timestamp, and let's say if this data is less than 10 days old, then push it into S3. And if it's older than that, ignore it. And from there, now we make sure that we have very fresh data coming into S3. As we said before, we could have a Lambda function trigger off the back of this S3 upload, and then we could go and do a whole bunch of other things, such as inserting into a database, making it available to a client, serving it up on our own API, the, the possibilities there are really endless. So this was an overview of AWS AppFlow. I hope you found this interesting. Make sure to hit the like button and of course subscribe to the Serverless Guru channel and I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.